It's been always possible to create a spectacular site with Library. But business users have always relied on technical users to be able to achieve that. Modern Site Building Project was born with the vision in mind to empower business users to create beautiful and outstanding sites autonomously. And this project was born or built based on three pillars. The first one, adv advanced page management. The second one, realistic page editing. And the third one, integrated content authoring. And before we start really digging into some of the features that we have in 7.2, we wanted to revisit some of the concepts that we introduced in 7.1, which was the first version to include the modern site building project. And Pablo is going to help us with that. Thank you, Marta. You're a really nice person. <laughs> As Marta said, with Library 7.1, we brought a, new, a lot of new features related to content creation. One of these features was the term content page. These pages are built with fragments, which are just pieces of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we also create a new tool that we call the Page Editor to allow creating these pages easily. We also found that sometimes we need to show actual content, like web contents or blog entries, inside these pages. So we created display pages to allow mapping full structures to a page. And because we don't want to start from a blank page every time, we also create page templates to have some work done before creating a new content or display page. And of course, all of these pages and templates have what we call inline content editing. With inline content editing, you can just go inside the page editor and change a page content right uh, in all editable fields. But for now, let's stop speaking about Library 7.1, and let's go to Library 7.2. So, Marta. OK. So in 7.2, we wanted to take a step forward. And we wanted not to only empower our business users, but we also on wanted to provide the tools and mechanisms for all those technical users out there. Some of them, I believe, are here with us today. So you are the ones that can empower your business users. Let's start taking a look at 7.2. One of the things that Jorge mentioned earlier in his slides is that we, uh, 7.2 comes with a new set of out-of-the-box fragments and more powerful capabilities. Users can select from different fragments that are available, things like buttons, paragraphs, images, or headings, are available for the user to use when building their site. These elements are available in the sidebar panel in our newly improved uh, page editor. Additionally, in 7.2, users do have a more flexible content distribution in the page thanks to configurable layouts. These layouts are available also in the section builder in our sidebar panel, and users can select the one column layout, two column, or three column, or four column layout. And it's as simple as selecting the layout desired and placing it in the page. And as we see, it's automatically rendered in the page. These layouts uh, are totally resizable, and they're also configurable. Users can decide to change, for example, the number of columns, or they can decide to change the horizontal or the vertical padding, as we see we're doing in the example. In line with this, in 7.2, users do also have greater movement freedom, thanks to drag and drop. The classic example in this case, users can select one of the basic components that we have on the section builder, drag and drop it to the position that they want. As we see, we're doing in the, with the heading in this case, or the image. These elements are also, uh, the users can also move them throughout the page, not only from the section builder, as we see we're doing with the image. Pablo? Yeah. Before I mention that we were able to map full structures to display pages in order to show content. But what happens if we want to show just a single asset inside a display page or a content page? Well, now this is possible. We rebuild the whole mapping interface, and we now show a mapping configuration right next to each editable field. If we select a content type and then select a single asset, we can select a field, and it will be shown right inside the editable content. Also, we are filtering uh, the list of fields that we are showing for each editable field type. For example, in here, 
we are changing an image, and because of this, we are only seeing image-related fields. If we choose one of them, we see the image that it is immediately rendered. We also wanted to improve the compatibility between widgets and content pages. It was already possible to add widgets to a content page in Library 7.1, and it worked like this. By creating a new fragment and including some special custom element inside it, you were able to add a widget uh, by embedding it inside the fragment. This was useful, especially if you wanted to add some CSS to customize the widget. But what if I just want to add a widget to the content page? Now, this is possible, too. There's a new sidebar panel called Widgets with all the widgets available in your site, and you can just drag any of them inside the page just the same way you would do with a fragment. And because now we have a lot of new elements, like sections, columns, with widgets, even editable fields, there's a new sidebar panel called the Structure Tree. In here, we can see all the elements that are, are up inside the page, and we can click on any of them to make the page editor scroll and focus the element we selected. And now that we've selected an element, we can just start conversations in here. We have a new panel that is called the Comments panel, where we can set a lot of comments uh, speaking about a fragment. With this, we can just request changes or have some conversation about how amazing our page is. We can even resolve whole conversation when they're done. But let's speak about the fragments we have in the page. Because at the beginning of the presentation, Marta mentioned that we wanted fragments to be more powerful. And I want to show you how we did this with Library 7.2. Now, each fragment can have its own JSON configuration, defining some options that will be available to business users. In this example, we see a new text align option that will be added to a fragment. Once we've defined the option, we can just use it maybe in our JavaScript or maybe inside the HTML. For the case of HTML, we are using the free marker syntax to include these variables. And after that, this is how we'll look for business users. Right next to each fragment, there will be a configuration panel with all available options. In this example, our user will be changing the button spacing from 3 to 5. And he'll see that the fragment is automatically re rendered with the full configuration. There's a workshop tomorrow morning from Pavel Alessandro that is sitting around here <laughs> and that speaks more deeply about fragment configuration, editable fields, and everything you can do with them. So if you want to know more or try them, don't forget to come to this workshop. Because for now, we're going to stop here. Because I will go the whole morning speaking about all the new features we have in Library 7.2, but we thought that it would be better to just show you how it works. So, Marta. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so. As we've seen, and as the title of the presentation states, we've built this tool uh, not only keeping developers in mind, but also very focused on the non-technical users or business users. And we thought that who would be best than me, a non-technical user, to start with this demo today? Well, that's not 100% truth because I'm part of the team. I'm the project manager of the team, so I'm uh, aware of the features, of the functionalities that the team is working on. But we're going to see that what we're going to show now is something simple and uh, straightforward to use that almost even my dog, a uh, non-technical user, could use. So let's go. First of all, uh, I'm going to log in. Hmm? Rebo, sí. Oh, yes, sorry. I'm, uh, my colleague here is telling me that I, <laughs> I didn't introduce our, our demo. Sorry about that. So um, the, this is the, first of all, I'm going to provide a little bit of context of the use case that we're going to be using today, which is the same uh, use case that some of my colleagues will be using later on some of the sessions that we, where they'll be exposing some of the features and functionalities regarding the experience management framework. Uh, we're going to be using uh, Ryubo. Ryubo is a fictitious car brand which has a group of sites. Uh, all these sites, they are related to each other, but they're also independent, and they have been built to serve different business needs. Uh, they have a public website, some customer portals, and an employee intranet. In our case, we're going to be 
focusing on the Riubo Pasadena's dealer website because we think this is the, the one that it really helped us showcase some of our features. So now, yes, I'm going to <laughs> start with the demo. So first of all, I'm going to log in. And before I start, I wanted to uh, showcase a little bit the website that we're going to try to replicate. Uh, as we see, this is a standard homepage with the usual elements. Uh, we have here a navigation menu. We have a banner. We also do have some filtering options in here, featured content, a promo, some location information, and a footer. Okay, and users through this page can navigate to product pages, which in this case uh, is a display page, and display pages can be edited through here. We can edit the content, so if we realize, for example, that the price of the car is incorrect, we can just quickly make an edit, publish it again, and the content is automatically updated. Or we could also edit the template that we're, that we're using to visualize and render this page. So as we see. So if we go back now to our home page, which is a content page, and where we are reusing some of the information that we have in our web content. And if we go here, we can start looking at the insights of our page. We can see here how we have our sidebar panel, and we can navigate through the different elements that we have in the page thanks to it. This page has been built uh, using different fragments. Some of them are out-of-the-box fragments. For example, the banner uh, it has been built usually, using mostly out-of-the-box fragments, but we're using also other type of fragments, fragments that have been created thanks to our developers. We have here, for example, the filtering. Here we're using an asset publisher. Or we also have some HTML fragments in here. So if we go back now and we start trying to replicate our page, I'm going to go to our site builder. Okay, And I'm going to create a page. As we see, the first thing will be prompt, we're being prompt to select one of the, these two templates. This is usually the, the way users normally start building a page. Uh, companies invest a lot of uh, time and effort on branding, and usually this is the desired way. So I'm going to go and start with the basic template. I'm going to name our page, DEFCON 2019. Okay. And voila, we have, sorry. Um, Let's go back. Okay, so Pablo. Okay, back again. So we have our page ready. So we see we have the common elements, we have the navigation, and we have the header and the, the footer. And so you don't think I'm cheating in this presentation that I'm starting really from a already existing template. I'm going to go and delete all the elements on our page. And I'm going to start from a blank page. OK. So we have our page here. And I'm going to start adding some of our basic components. For example, things like uh, our navigation and our footer. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to start by adding our top header by dragging and dropping it to a page. Next, I'm going to be including our navigation bar and our footer. So we see that we have the common elements already in our page. And the first thing next I'm going to do is to change the name of our site, because we're, doing, we're building the Ryubo Pasadena site. So let's start by Pasadena site. OK, first step done, correct. Next, what I'm going to try to do is to try to build our, our banner, the one that we have in here. So I'm going to start by selecting some, one of the layouts that we have 
In this case, I'm going to be using a two-column layout. And before I start having any additional fragment, I'm going to configure our, our layout. I'm going to change the background color. The image that we're going to be using has a, some kind of dark color, so I'm going to set a dark background color. The colors that we see here, they're, uh, they're not just any colors. They're colors that have been defined in the theme, so it's easier for the user. And next, I'm going to be changing also the configuration options of our layout. And I'm going to add more air, because we need some space for the content that we're going to include in a second. OK, our layout is ready. Next, we will need to include some of our fragments so we can add some content. So in this case, I'm going, I'm going to start by aiming to, to replicate this area here. I'm going to add a heading. And because I'm going to need two headings, I'm going to duplicate this fragment. And next, I'm going to also need a paragraph. OK, ready. And before I start really adding content to the page, I'm going to style these elements. So this element, I need it to be in capital letters. So I'm going to change the heading level to H4, because I know this one is the one with capital letters. I'm going to reduce the bottom spacing. And I'm also going to change the color. In this case, I need it to be the corporate red, so I'm going to set it to red. OK, going to do the same for the second heading. In this case, H1 is the one that I want. The bottom spacing is also correct, but I want it to be white. So change it to white. And the same for our paragraph. OK, this one, the bottom spacing, I need it a bit, a bit higher. And I also need it to be white. OK, so, so far, so good. I think that we have the elements that we need. And next, what I'm going to start looking into is to enter in some of the content. Content, we can introduce it in two different ways. We can do it through inline content, inline editing, that I'm going to copy this so it's easier for me. And I'm going to be editing this content. Oops. OK. There. And for the second heading, in this case, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to map it to one of the web contents where we have already information about our car. OK, so as we see here, we can select to map this element to one of their contents. We can either select a web content article, a document, or a blog entry. But in this case, what we need is a web content article. We select the car that I know that it, in this case is the Rio Bocellurian. And now I just need to select the field that I want to display. In this case, the model title. OK, and as we see, the, the model title is automatically rendered on our page. Next, I'm going to do the same with the paragraph. And one of the good things is that once we mapped a web content, it's automatically listed in the circuit list here in our page, so it's easier for us. So we select the Rio Bocellurian as well. And in this case, I know that it's the model subtitle. OK? So content is there. But now we need our image. By the way, any resemblance that we see to this car with the Volkswagen cars is just pure coincidence. For including our image, we, can also, we also have two alternatives. We can either select our image through manual selection just by going to our document library. We would just select our image. Or we could do it also through content mapping, which is the way I'm going to do it now. So I select the Rio Bocellurian again. And in this case, I'm going to select a model of image for. Here, we're only being listed the type of uh, fields that are only image. OK. So things are looking promising. We have all the elements. But if Juan, our designer, would be here, he would be complaining about the composition of the page. Here, the text is aligned with the windscreen. The information, it, it has more space on the top. So 
what I'm going to do is try to fix this now. And for this, I'm going to be using an element that we're calling the spacer, that it's very helpful in these situations. OK, so I'm going to drop it here, and I'm going to configure it. I'm going to set it to 5. OK. <coughs> so now we have all the elements ready, and the page really looks, our banner really looks like, like the other one. But if I'm not mistaken, I'm missing the button. So for this, I'm going to go back to our basic components. I'm going to select a fragment, and I'm going to drag and drop it into the page. But if we realize this button doesn't look like the one that we have in the page, and for this, we're going to need the help of our developer so we can configure it. I like that button. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I'm removing this default button we have in here, but it has because it has different colors and this stuff, but it's not exactly the same one we are seeing in the home page and some other pages in Uruguay Pasadena. And um, well the button was here, Marta. It was already <laughs> created. But I want to show you before how we got to create this button and why this was useful. Because as I said it's been used in some other places in our Erio Pasadena site. And I want you uh, to see how we created it. Uh, uh, this button lives in this Erio Pasadena uh, fragment collection in here. And it's just, as you can see, uh, HTML with uh, some editable element. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. OK. Can you see the code? Yeah. OK. Uh, as I said, it's just an editable field of type link. We are using here the editable field of type link because, because afterwards we will well, link, link this page some more, also to some other place. But I want you to see that in here we are using a configuration value. And as I told you before, here we are using this free marker syntax that you can just for, forget about and just use this <laughs> variable. And it's because we don't have variables in, in HTML. This configuration is defined inside this JSON. OK? In here, we are uh, defining a configuration named bottom spacing that will be the, the one used by, the, by our business users. And we are use, uh, using uh, values from 0 to 5 because we know that in our theme, we define a variable that just uh, follows the, the spacing steps. So in here, we are just adding the class uh, pb dash and the configuration value, and it just works. So now I can return to the page and show you in here. What is this? Yeah. I'm going to zoom out. Yeah. No, no, not this one. Sorry. I'm going to return to the demo in here. Yeah. Here we are. I can just drag the button and see that in here we have the configuration we provide. That is the button spacing. I think in this case it was four. Probably uh, add some spacing below the below the button, and I can just publish. And we can see if we view the page that it looks exactly the same than the other page we have. Actually, if I go to the to the side, yeah, we're here we can see the home page and our demo, and it looks the same. <clears throat> but now I want you to, I want you to see something different. Because Marta created this uh, from basic components, and I could do the same to create these feature cards we have in here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna start with this, and add some basic layout with three columns, and then I could add, add, add here just some cards, or maybe I can combine these images with headings, and then map everything to the three cards we have in here. But we don't need to do this, because we already have some tools to create a list of, a list of cards, that is the asset publisher. So for this case, I'm just going to the widgets panel in here and going to the asset publisher and dragging it he here. And because it works like a fragment, I can just add some spacing to the top and bottom, and it will work. And now, because this is an asset publisher, I can choose some template and some content to show. 
Uh, for this demo, we prepared a display template. I'm not going to go through this because you already know how it works. That is called the feature cast row. I'm going to save it. And I'll go for a content set. In this case, we create a manual content set with three cards that we want to show in the demo. I can just save. And if I publish the page and wait for a couple of seconds, you will see that this already works. This is how our asset publisher that is built exactly like, the, like in the home page. And because this is an asset publisher, these are links to our actual cards. Now, I would like to show more things, but I think we, have, we don't have enough time. So I'm just returning to the presentation. And I want to, I want to tell you that this, all of this work wouldn't have been possible with all of this awesome team. There are even more people in here. And some of, some of us are in the, in the event, so you can ask us or there anyone you, anything you want. Jorgen is there recording the session. Hi, Jorgen. Hey. <laughs> How is it going? Thank you. He's awesome. Ask him a lot of stuff. He knows <laughs> a lot. Uh, so I want to thank our team and everyone here to, to use this. So I hope you like this new page editor. And I hope that you don't forget our goal that is empowering our business users so they can create awesome sites. And also, if we can make our lives easier, well, that's fine. So thank you. Yeah.